So to anyone who has this query on how to work in World Bank, how to work in the UN, how to build a thriving career in public policy domain, even if I've failed my civil service examination, then please listen to these five, six minutes of conversation very diligently, make notes if needed. Okay. I don't want you to be coming up with the uh, same questions again and again. I think almost on a daily basis, one question that I'm asked is, Raman, how can I join the UN or World Bank? How can I build a thriving career in public policy? So five, six minutes, everyone who is watching this recording, listening to this live, make notes. This should be your only source from here on. If you were to think of building a career in public policy or international relations beyond UPSC. Of course, that plan A has to be plan A. This is plan B after you have, you know, exhausted your attempts. So I'll be brutally honest here. Some of you will hate me for my honesty and that is totally fine. But someone has to be honest. Certain steps are there. Step one is do not ever enroll in Indian public policy schools, period. I will not advise my younger sibling to do that. And therefore, I will not advise you to do that. I know it's a controversial thing to say, but these schools in India are some of the most useless schools in the world when it comes to public policy. I'm truly astounded and ashamed to see that some of these schools are charging a part of 10 lakh plus GST to teach you some basic economics, statistics, law. Of course, there's a module in public policy also. Half the courses are taught by retired civil servants. Nothing wrong with that. But what are they teaching you? Does it even have a practical relevance? You need to understand that. In India, and you all know this already, Policy making is a prerogative of the Indian parliament. Of course, executives also have some power in terms of nudging those skeletons of those policies. But to be in that position, you either have to be a joint secretary or above in civil services or a member of parliament or a minister. What is a 20 year old kid going to learn if he is to be given lectures by a retired IS officer talking about things he or she did during his time in the government? That IS officer will teach you one session in that public policy school and then we'll give a podcast somewhere else. But the question again is, what did you learn? But 10 lakh investment, nothing. And 10 lakh is no, it's not a joke. Why is 20 year old kid spending time learning how to make policies? Is that even required at that age? And this happens when useless people with only subject matter expertise are in charge of curriculum. So if you're joining these schools for, for certification, you're also being fooled. Certification from such schools, piece of chunk. The world has indeed moved beyond nonsense of certifications and the sheepskin effect of degrees. It is very, very important that you now start focusing on learning and gaining practical skills. No one gives a damn about what certificates you have or how many IS officers you've interacted with. I want all of you to know the relevance of skill sets. You need to be an asset to your employer and that will happen not via your degrees or certifications, but via your skill sets. And I'm truly, you know, shamed that Many youngsters in India are being fooled on a massive scale, spending one year, 10 lakh for a program. And that's a significant investment, not just in terms of money, but also time, emotions. And even when you graduate from such schools, they, the best case scenario, you will end up taking up secondary research positions. Why? Because you have zero skills. You could have learned all those skills with one month of live interactions at Misfits. Fundamentals of economics, policy. Step one, avoid that trap. No need to enroll in useless Indian policy schools. 10 lakh is a big investment. Make such an investment only on things that are worth it. It is totally fine to spend money. There's no nothing wrong with that. But there's no need to spend money on nonsense. Okay, so if you are coming up with queries, you know, this is a new school in town, has good officers, etc, etc. For public policy, plan B, career options, don't do that. There's some good schools and are well-known schools. That's a different strategy that we'll talk about later. Step one should be clear. Step two, identify the skills that you should learn. What are those skills that are valued by the UN, World Bank, IMF, EDB? Of course, you all need to learn fundamentals of policy consulting. You need to learn fundamentals of economics, finance, liberal arts, philosophy, how to communicate, how to negotiate. All of that is absolutely needed. No doubt about that. But you have to intertwine these soft skills with hard skills. You need to intertwine learnings of philosophy with coding. You need to learn machine learning, data analytics. It is totally fine if you do not come from a hardcore engineering or science background. So you can still learn these skill sets and you have to learn these skill sets if you are to build a good mark in the other domain. But why? Why should you build these skill sets around technology? Because the rise of technology in every sector has absolutely made it imperative for all the policy professionals to be technologically literate. These organizations don't expect you to just browse through a few research papers and draft notes out of it. 
if you do not understand the fundamentals of coding or machine learning you will find it very 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 difficult to leverage technology in policy design implementation even analysis you need to learn the art of predicting certain scenarios data driven decision making is central to modern policy making of course you won't learn this in upsc preparation but in the real world that is needed in very valuable international relations in ir why because if you can't analyze data you will not understand global trends be it around the flows inflows of investments or outflows of it and it is truly astounding for me that these policy schools in india in the garb of certifications are selling nonsense for 10 10 lakh they don't have such courses they don't entertain those learnings and that's why you know these folks are not able to get decent jobs can't clear one interview think about this forget about your certifications if you have such diverse skill sets around economics finance liberal arts philosophy communication coding machine learning management you you will have a lot of confidence in your own abilities and there is no power on earth why you will not be valued by the market market values those who are talented have the skill sets so it's fine if you can't gain those certificates but learn those skill sets step 2 step 3 identify realities identify the jobs un and world bank these are not the only organization in the world for policy roles even if you were to work in the un you need to have strong background in finance economics policy and complementary technical skill sets that i've spoken of even at entry level but you have to identify organizations and here the magic comes and here the problem also comes policy making is not the prerogative of the government these days alphabet parent company of google they hire for various policy roles on data privacy internet policy meta microsoft apple they all engage at the intersection of technology and policy around the world and yesterday i was reading a an opening that amazon was hiring experts in tech policy that term tech policy for regulatory compliance data protection so in today's day and age governments are not the only entities that hire for such roles there are plethora of companies that are scouting for talent looking for talent who have these complementary skill sets step 4 reverse engineer these skill sets reverse engineer the skill set that are valued in the market of course i've done this already for you you have to intertwine basics of policy business with technology and then with good hard skills and soft skills start applying to these jobs and if you have the skills there is no power on earth that will stop you and if you have the skills i will personally recommend you so at this stage focus on plan a don't worry about other things if for some reason plan a does not work out dedicate 4 5 months learn these skill sets and gear up for your incredible plan b it's okay if you don't come from harvard or stanford or wharton develop skills and you will get good jobs that is the beauty of the capitalist world we live in i have very much enjoyed my time uh, at gji i am very sad that it, it's coming to an end uh, it was i learned a lot about a sector that i was not exposed to at all being a fellow at gji was one of the things that was on my to do list since i heard about gji and um, very i was very happy when i got selected i remember the the first line of the email said it's a yes from gji so that was a very nice moment moment for me i think from there on i started my journey of actually trying to accomplish my dream of working in consulting and um, it's just i think gji is a place where i was taught that you know it's there are some bitter truths about management consulting that we just have to gulp in and swallow and not just think about it a lot so that was nice through the mentors and through you know having peers and other fellows who were going through the same journey was great going back into this sort of school environment for a couple of hours a week was amazing um i definitely want to appreciate the white paper research that i'm doing my mentor from invest india and all the kinds of things that are arranged for us which is you know it can be a weekly meeting or different kinds of like sorts of homeworks that we get i think i was learning at every stage that's just the first thing that i would say i loved about gj the community the people and just the power of a really strong network how to build one how to nurture one i think uh, the second thing would be um just continued education and learning uh, through gji i was exposed to a spectrum of topics ranging from tech ethics to liberal arts to policy consulting and even management communication really showing up Schrodinger is meant to help you um, practice for case interviews. Very useful if you can start with that um, as early as you can. And then I particularly found over the past three weeks, I've, I've found Trinity to be very useful. And for those who don't know, Trinity contains master classes by a variety of very senior level executives and and, and individuals who work in the management consulting, policy consulting, and product management space. And they they basically just share different concepts and ideas that they found useful in their working life, and also share. 
examples from projects that they've worked on and sometimes from books that they've written. Uh, they offer different skills, but specific to this one, I think, um, let's say I already work at, uh, as a management consultant at an organization. I think even if I'm not at a higher position, I would have a better understanding of how to listen to the person who's in a higher position of me and let's say what you said about leadership and how they are trying to as leaders um, tell a story to their people in the organization as a myth so I would I think that would be my understanding of the whole masterclass today that having skills to understand where other people are coming from when they would talk about business um, especially when that business is about giving advice um, and how philosophy intersects.